Senator Roberts. Thank you, Chair. As a servant to the people of Queensland and Australia, I need to speak up for my constituents after both Liberal and Labor speakers, and particularly after Labor's amendments. And I acknowledge Senator Gallagher's open admission that this is doing it on the run, and that's not a, my comment is not a reflection on her, but on the system. In fact, this is an extraordinary bill to be introduced by a supposedly Liberal government. In fact, peering beyond the verbiage, one could be forgiven for thinking that this is a bill being introduced by a Labor Greens government. This is because it penalises the thrifty and hard-working to subsidise the lazy and the feckless. And this is being hidden by an increasingly complex system. This is simply a tax grab for the now, a short-term sugar hit and band-aid at the expense of medium to long-term savings, investments and jobs. This confirms yet again that our potentially abundant nation is being crippled by economic mismanagement and that this has been the case, sadly, for years. This bill is a dog, and all the amendments are just making it a different species of dog. A government that seemingly lacks the strength of will to cut spending is instead raising taxes. Does that sound like a true Liberal government? Rather than solving the long-term problem of an ageing population increasingly burdening the welfare system in order to raise a relatively small amount of revenue in the short term, this legislation will actually increase the future burden expected to be placed on the welfare system and on our children and grandchildren. Those who are striving to provide for themselves in old age are being kicked in the guts so that the government can continue the Gillard, Rudd, Milne government's profligate spending. This legislation is yet another band-aid to a repeatedly amended superannuation legislative tangle of Byzantine complexity. What is desperately needed is a coherent policy reflecting the philosophy that hard work and thrift should be rewarded. Now, I had previously thought that the Liberals believed in this, yet this legislation before us attacks the interests of hard-working, everyday Australians and, worse still, Chair, contributes to the long-term problem of growing dependency on the age pension. Pauline Hanson's One Nation believes in rewarding hard work and thrift and in safeguarding the superannuation savings of everyday Australians. We argue that what is needed is a replacement of this dog's breakfast approach with a superannuation policy akin to the United Kingdom pension system, in which contributions from taxpayers are quarantined from general revenue and pensions are paid without means or assets test in addition to, not instead of, any additional superannuation savings. Superannuation in this country was intended to replace the age pension. The Hawke government introduced the superannuation guarantee levy to this end because it recognised that an ageing society would progressively place greater and greater burdens on the social security system. Yes, there are people rorting the system, and that's what happens when government regulates to control people's behaviour. It's a fact. The system as it now stands is broken broken by successive governments looking for sugar hits at the expense of the people. Just who do these political elite think they are? Governance, responsible financial governance, is non-existent. The Treasurer in recent weeks admitted that the backpacker tax provisions were proposed without cost-benefit analysis. We have, as a nation, under Labor, Greens and Liberal Nationals wasted tens of billions of dollars on so-called climate initiatives without any cost-benefit analysis. We need to quarantine people's savings from the avaricious clutches of spendthrift government buying short-term votes through bogus promises while avoiding the, the hard fiscal decisions. Years of pandering to the Greens are now coming home to roost. This is our money the people's money, people's hard-earned money. The fact that the ATO is the keeper of these funds tells us all we need to know. People need reassurance from the rules that are consistent and unchanging. The reassurance that comes from rules that are cons consistent and unchanging. Yet instead, every government changes the rules when we need people to save to be rewarded for their saving. No wonder 
I'm told this morning that a retailer of home safe storages says that safe sales are quadrupling. The system as it is now is so filled with jargon, and yet we're supposed to be making it simple, simplifying. Yet it becomes more complex, ever more complex, and makes people more dependent on the advice of professionals and funds leeching fees. People's longevity is increasing, and we need to plan for a system based on hard data, empirical evidence. Super was designed to encourage savings for investment. Next year, and I would invite other parties to join us in this, next year forums around the country will be held with people by our party so that we can listen to people's needs and get the data. All we know now is that the system is being destroyed and that our country's tax system is crippling. And we must turn our attention to the tax system because it is destroying our country. Why, for example, do we tax employment? We all know in our country that when something is taxed, its usage is reduced. So why do we tax employment? We tax employment through PAYE schemes. So when a, when a company has to pay for uh, a certain amount of gross income, a net income increase, then they are actually paying the total on top, which adds an enormous burden because that is a disincentive, a disincentive to, to employment. Then we have a direct tax in the states on, on payroll. Jim Killally, the former Deputy Commissioner for, for Taxation for Large Companies in International Matters, said in 1996 and in 2010 that 90% of Australia's large companies are foreign owned and since 1953 have paid little or no company tax. Just work doing rough figures indicates that that would earn us $100 billion a year in taxation revenues. The Australian Bureau of Statistics in the late 1990s and early 2000s said that 68 per cent of a person who is earning the average annual income is, is spent on government. 68 per cent goes to government in the form of taxes, rates, fees, levies, charges, special charges. Our taxation system currently levies fuel at the rate, an effective tax rate of 230 per cent. Our taxation system currently levies a tax on a loaf of bread at around 100 per cent, an effective tax rate. Similarly for housing, around 90 per cent. We could fix the budget black hole and reduce the tax burden of everyday Australians, hard-working Australians, with a simple, comprehensive review of our taxation system. We could fix the debt with a simple, modern, fair, efficient tax system. We can't keep limping along with the current dog of a tax system and the current dog of a superannuation system. We need a comprehensive review, not the fiddling on the run that is coming to us from the major parties and the Greens. Tax is not a solution simply by increasing tax. That is destroying this country. We need to listen to the people. We need to come up with a simple tax system, a fair, efficient and honest tax system. We are blindly stumbling around the real issue, and that is tax. We need to make Australia great again for everyone.